So what's the problem with presenting? Well, we see huge problems with presenting. The lame prevail. Yeah, with 30 million presentations going on, on every day, we have to try and help people improve and present. Because we end up with some real bad situations, like you may have heard of death by PowerPoint. There's a lot of negativity around presenting generally. Okay? You've got bullet points, bullets. Yeah? Why are people shooting bullets at us? Yeah? You've got death by PowerPoint. Yeah? So it's real trying to improve PowerPoint and trying to improve how it presents. PowerPoint gets a bad rap. PowerPoint's the vehicle that you use. You can use Prezi or Powtoon or something else. We see people presenting bullet points in Prezi. So like, we gotta try and improve, yeah? We gotta try and make it better. So one of the things we're trying to do is to save this poor man. Now he hasn't died, but he's fallen asleep, okay? At his own event, okay? This is, he's got a keypad in his hand, and when we asked him a question, he woke up and voted, and then he went back to sleep. So this is a conference in Dubai where somebody's literally passed out, fast asleep at his own event. And this is a sort of problem. Anybody tell me why I took this picture? Can you see one person who's doing something a little bit strange at an event? They're all talking. What about the lady in the back row? I went to her and I said, excuse me, um, are you uh, this man's uh, wife and he snuck you into this event? And she said, hell no, honey, I'm from Texas. These are all Americans in uh, Jamira Beach Hotel. And she said, I paid $5,000 to come here. And I said, but how can you concentrate and knit at the same time? Surely it's hard. I mean, it's a modern day, I suppose the older day equivalent of, of tweeting, yeah, or Facebooking or whatever. And she said, you know, this is the problem. This is a real slide from a real customer. They said to me, can you make it better, Johnny? I said, hell yes, I can delete it. I can delete it and start again, okay? What's wrong with it? Everything, Everything. yeah? Vote, tell me, what's wrong with it? One, two, three, or four? Well, good, a few of you getting that. 50, 60 of you voted, 47% of you got it right. Pretty much everything's wrong with that. And there's a new set of keypad numbers, 60 at 23, 24, and 60. Is somebody remembering those numbers? Give us a wave and we'll give you a flash. Top five. You can't have one twice, by the way. So we've got a 68 at the back, 23. Okay, 23, give us a wave if you're in the top five there. Is these top five over here. Those are the top five, it's two rows. Good. So there's the team scores, gentlemen. We've got some work to do. The ladies have it at the moment. What about this slide? A PowerPoint slide. Now, the IT industry are some of the worst. So are medical, yeah, okay? They tend to put too much information. The CEO of the company said to me, Johnny, you know, this is our slide that we're taking externally to the market and we're presenting to people about our different lines of business. Can you improve it? And I said to him, do you know what people get from this slide if you take it externally? And he said, no, no. What, what, what do they get? And I said, come here. Smarties and M&Ms. <laughs> so this is a case of being too close to your message. You can't see that people can't actually get it. You know? So we said, bring the marketing manager. Let's get this changed right away. So it's a common mistake. People have had enough. Audiences have had enough. Audiences, the first presenter was tweeted off the stage in 2010. Tweeted off the stage, asked to leave because they literally don't communicate correct, correctly. They're droning on, presenting too long, reading their slides, okay? So it's a common technique that we're trying to improve and help people. So we do it in three simple ways, and there's three simple things I'd like to show you tonight. First and foremost, you all have a smartphone. Let's gamify and create more gamification around people's own devices. They're carrying a device, engage people with them. Why are we using keypads tonight? Well, for example, what if the internet goes down? So you need to have a plan B, and that can help you eradicate the issue of kind of internet or network connectivity. I mean, like, does anyone here not have a smartphone? Anyone? That's a real shame, because I, I, had a, I have an iPhone 6 I was going to give somebody, but OK, I'll, I'll keep it. Oh, now you don't have a, oh, now you have a, OK, I see. Real fun. Look, this is Ahmed. I met him. He is the last man in Dubai with a Nokia phone. I took his picture. I said, please, can I think he's famous? He's the last man in Dubai with a Nokia phone. He doesn't have it. He, he literally, he doesn't have he, And I said, how can you live without a smartphone? Dubai is second behind Singapore in terms of smartphone penetration. Most people are carrying multiple devices with them. So engage them on it. Look at the airlines. I don't print anything, anything anymore. I go, to the, uh, go to, right to the plane with my passbook, yeah, with my, with my tickets. So we need to engage people more. And it needs to be device agnostic. I don't care what you come with. 
whether you come with a smartphone, whatever you come with, a laptop, an iPad, and it needs to work on anything. So we use what are called web apps. And that, that's, that's an example of one. If you want to take a note of one, you can see how it works. It's just an app, a little bit of information. HSBC using it today, all lines of business using it to replace keypads, to allow people to text in, looking at agendas, making paperless events. So that's typically what we're doing. And so you can have an agenda on there, who's speaking. You can have an overview of the event, where it is, when it is, the core information. So that's one thing you can do. You can definitely gamify through different types of apps. Let me just give you a quick example. This is one which has come up now, which is coming recently. And this is just an idea which you might consider. Hi, I'm Tim. And I'm Sean. And this is CrowdMics, the first audio system that turns your smartphone into a wireless microphone for live events. Now my voice can be heard over the room's speakers. Think about it. Instead of just two microphones, there's 200, even 2,000. For those who are not comfortable or able to speak in front of the crowd, text commenting is a great feature. Finally, CrowdMics includes a dead simple polling feature. Connect to your crowd with CrowdMics. So there you go, yeah, crowd mics. Turning people's phones into, into microphones, suddenly you get everyone involved. Then if you don't have an app, how about we just use some sort of interactivity? Because we notice a huge lift in people's engagement through if we engage them with different devices. And I want to give you a few quick examples over the years. 2005, here's Cisco playing a game show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Based around gamification, based around gamifying their event and having some fun, generating money. So the, I, here's an AGM. For EMAR, 3,000 people voting for one question. Engagement and engagement of the whole event increased dramatically. How about a dinner where everybody is judging on the night? There is no prejudging. The audience are live judges on the night. Can you imagine the atmosphere and the energy in the room when such a thing goes on? But here is probably the best example of gamification that I can show you. It just happens next door in, in one of the universities next door, and it's for a company called Bioderma. Who's heard of Bioderma, skincare company? They have raised their sales by 80% through gamification. And it started off seven years ago with a few of us sitting around in a room talking about how can we engage people more? How can we create some fun? So people come to an event, they get given a keypad, they have to know the product, they have to understand and un know the product to play the game. And they get asked in teams to come up, it's a nice stage set with good fun and the engagement level is excellent. Everyone's very interested and they play a game show and they all have some fun. They come up on stage, there's a final buzzer round. So the whole event, it's more like a party. It's happening next week, it happens every year, and it's really a lot of fun. Now the most fun that happens is when the person wins. And there's one particular guy I want to introduce you to, his name is Ahmed. And I went to talk to him afterwards, and I said, Ahmed, you know, you own a, you own a pharmacy in Alain, and you won this year's, you know, Bioderma Games. He said, this is the best thing and only thing I've ever won. And he was so excited. So if you can imagine Ahmed in an average day, and now imagine him on stage, this is what he's doing. There he is. Watch him. He's loving it. This is gamification, people. This is what it does. This is the atmosphere you're going to get. Be ready for fun. It's fun, right? They're just loving it. Look, there he is. He's never done this before. He can't believe he's having so much fun. I hope he's somebody's dad, because he was so much fun. So that's really what you want to do. If you're going to introduce gamification, be ready to have some fun. So let's have some fun. We tried to invent who wants to be a millionaire, but there's too many millionaires in Dubai already. So it was no good, so we came up with who wants to be a billionaire, okay? Because really, million, what is million? Million is nothing, okay? Only billion, okay? Give us a billion, okay? So here's a question. It's impossible for a human to lick its elbow, true or false? trying anyone trying can the human lick its elbow true or false okay some of you are guessing there I don't see anybody trying normally we see 400 people stand up and try and lick their elbow okay there is one or two trying good so actually it is impossible it's true so you didn't win there I'm sorry okay so it is true and keypad 50 78 80 and 19 give us a wave and we'll pass you out good thank you pass out the flash to the, to the people put your hand up there's the team scores. A few other questions. What about some sports quiz? Let me ask you a quick question. What's the difference between baseball and cricket? Baseball is fun. Baseball games don't stop for afternoon tea. Okay, how about that? So you can see you can customize this for anything you want to make up. It's simply PowerPoint and making it interactive. So it's the way that we can do it. 
Um, good, a few of you got that right. Uh, 93, 80, 17, and 100. Give, your, give him a wave, make sure you get one. Thank you. Females are still in advance, guys. Iftar, we've made an Iftar quiz, for example. Here's a good question from that. How many eyelids does a camel have to protect it from blowing sand? A few of you getting it there. I have to hurry you. My time is ticking away. Good. A few different things there, good. 47% of you got that right. Good. 18, 76, 75, and 74. Give us a wave and we'll pass them out. Well done. And my last one, listen. I made this specially for you guys today. You ready? You ready for the question? Here it comes. Because I never heard this before. Here's a question. Go. Look, very fast, very, very fast. Excellent, okay. Very good, very good, very good. Like it, like it, like it, good. 37, 26, 78, and 99, they're all winners. Very good, gentlemen. Okay, it's closing, the gap is closing. So look, I'm running out of time, so let me be quick. We just got 20 minutes to grab people's attention. By the way, that was the end of the keypad round, so you can pass back your keypads. Grab the keypads, please, guys. This is typically what a before and after slide so we're creating animation, yeah? Adding, so the last part of it is to create better content as well as creating more engagement. Here's a slide before, look at the PowerPoint shapes and change it to look something more like this. We teach people how to do this. So we can teach you how to actually create it. Here's an example of a beautiful graph before and after, okay? So the idea is to sort of communicate and make it easier and get it, so that's an object. These are all PowerPoint slides, native PowerPoint slides. Typically, people are using slides like this, but we're trying to do something a bit more like this, okay? So something that kind of has a bit more movement and animation in it will create more. These are all native PowerPoint animations that are capable in PowerPoint that people don't really use properly. So don't be afraid to try it. Make the information simple on screen. And here's the most complicated slide we've ever made. It's got 300 objects in it. It won an award for the most animated slide in the world on SlideShare. So that's PowerPoint. You can email it to people, you can make it into a video, you can do anything you want, you can do amazing things if you use all of the capability. This is a timeline showing all the different levels. Good, so let me give you some takeaways as my time ticks away. 10, 20, 30. If you don't remember anything else, remember those three numbers. 10 slides delivered in 20 minutes with no font size less than 30. That is the ideal way to present to people. 10 slides, okay? Don't be afraid to make it simple. Get rid of the bullet point. Number four, I can't even say. Please stop reading what's on your slides, okay? Make it more interesting and engage your audience. So if we change this graph, if we change this formula to this formula, you will end up with what we call an alive audience, an engaged alive audience. Isn't that what you're trying to do? So in my last 16 seconds, I'll say you don't really get a newspaper, you get news. Yeah? If you think about it. You don't really get glasses, you get vision. You don't really get a mattress, you get sleep. And you don't really get a lamp, you get light. Well, if you use presentology, you don't really get a PowerPoint presentation, you get applause. Thank you very much. <laughs>